This video is sponsored by Raycon. This is a children's toy, and in just 10 days, I took it from being painfully slow to being fast. Terrifyingly fast. Holy cow! Maybe even fast enough to beat a motorcycle. Now, normally, if you asked why, I would just say something like, why not? But in this case, I actually do have a very specific and personal reason. I don't have a mini motorcycle, and you wouldn't think that that matters. I mean, I have an FCR 600, which is big and fast and retro and awesome, but bigger isn't actually always better. When you're a kid, you spend all your time wanting to be bigger, faster, craving the freedom of an adult life. The not-so-secret thing is, once you get to be an adult, all you really want is to do things that make you feel like a kid again. When the latest revision of mini motorcycles like the Honda Grom hit the market a decade ago, they quickly gained massive popularity because they do just that. And from the moment a person buys one, they instantly become part of the world's most exclusive fraternity, mini riders. So no matter how cool my big bike is, I'm just not a part of this special club. But it feels like all my friends are. In my dreams, I carry the immense weight of their judgment and this profound sense of sadness and shame. But that sadness slowly turns to anger and the shame yields to resolve. I will out mini these minis. I will make a motorcycle that is both smaller and faster than their minis. And I'm gonna do it in a week. Ish. This started because I saw a toy Razor motorcycle for sale early Thursday morning while I couldn't sleep. Seeing the enticing red fairings of this glorified scooter for 13 year olds got the wheels in my head to start turning because the wheels in my basement were not. You see, I picked up this trashed electric scooter with two 1600 watt motors months ago for cheap. It's the kind of thing that only a crazy person would buy. New. It's perfectly normal to buy one used after the crazy person has crashed it a few times. The point is, when I saw this toy Razor motorcycle on Marketplace, I immediately pictured those massive scooter wheels on it, and boom, I had my mini, and a shot at redemption. After picking it up a few short think? hours later, I immediately <laughs> took it to show my mechanic friend, Dave. This is my first time trying it. Oh, yeah. So, guess what I bought? I just can't wait to see this. I bought a mini. <laughs> Um, are you gonna make it go faster? I don't think I need to. It's a mini. That's what makes them cool, right? That they're that they're that they're really small. So this is like a mini's mini. This a is mini's mini. Is mini. <laughs> David seemed a little apprehensive until I revealed the full scale of my plans. So. <laughs> yes! Oh, that's gonna be dangerous. Any other day, I would literally be like, it's not gonna work, but I mean, Joel creates, right? Before sinking a ton of work into this David versus David's Goliath situation, I needed a benchmark of just how fast this thing could go. Was that nine miles an hour? Yeah, it's, it's not very fast. And since my ultimate goal is to defeat David's mini, I needed to see how it would do in its current state in a race. <laughs> we decided to get a bunch of minis together for a rematch the following Wednesday, which meant I had less than a week to complete the transformation. So, it was time to get hacking. Now, putting the wheels directly onto this frame might seem like a good idea, but an even better idea is to keep the wheel mounts from the scooter and mount those to the frame. Why? Because there's no suspension on this frame, and the short wheelbase makes the handling super twitchy. The rear swing arm from the scooter is the perfect way to both extend the wheelbase and maintain some suspension. In the front, by mounting the whole fork assembly to the frame, we also increase the rake angle and trail length, which basically means that when the contact patch of the tire is behind the steering axis, it creates an effect similar to that of a caster, and the wheel is more likely to follow the path of momentum as these numbers increase. We also get to sit up higher, which is good because I'm tall. All of this mechanical stuff is great, but if we don't have the juice to push it to the limit, then we'll be in trouble. So I reached out to Frank. You know, Frank, the guy who built the battery for my minecart. Frank builds e-bike batteries for fun, so I asked him just how much power I could get on short notice. And it just so happens that he was building a one-of-a-kind lithium iron phosphate pack for his e-bike. Unfortunately, the shape of his pack was pretty much already set, meaning that it would take a lot of work to get it to fit seamlessly into the bike. 
if it would fit at all. Thankfully, getting a great fit is exactly what you can expect from today's sponsor, Raycon. Raycon's everyday earbuds went through countless design iterations to seamlessly fit the curvature of the human ear. But I like them for a bunch of other reasons, like their noise isolation, which is awesome for bringing some classical serenity into the chaos of my work. And when things are too serene and I can't sleep, they let me binge scary stories in bed without disturbing my wife. And if I do need to hear my surroundings, I can easily switch from noise isolation to awareness mode with one button. Raycon's everyday earbuds have an unshakably good fit, offer 8 hours of playtime, a 32 hour battery life, plus they start at half the price of other premium audio brands, and they sound just as good. So click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash joelcreates to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. That's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N.com slash joelcreates for 15% off your Raycon purchase. Thanks Raycon. This is where things get sketchy. I mean, mechanically it was going great. I designed and cut some aluminum brackets to adapt the front assembly to the frame, and the same goes for the back. But the controllers did not want to play ball, and I wasn't convinced that they'd be powerful enough anyways. Plus, Frank ran into issues with his battery build that meant we would have to change strategies from the strategy that wasn't even our first strategy. We were running out of time. We were hoping to run the 60 volt system at just over 80 volts, but all we had access to were these 48 volt packs. But if we ran two of these in series, then we'd have 96 volts. And apparently if the capacitors in the controller are 100 volts, then they just might be able to handle it. 100 volts, baby, 100 volts. Except the motor controller that Frank lent me automatically shut off at the higher voltage. So I ripped the controller off my minecart, but the current draw was too much for the battery circuits, which kept switching off. Yep, 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 we're pulling too much in the third throttle setting. So I went to see another guy named Ron who builds all sorts of cool stuff, and he had another two 48 volt packs that I could use to increase the current. Ultimately, I ended up with four batteries. Two parallel groups ran in series. So close, and I just realized that I wired the like packs in series when I need to wire the like packs in parallel and run everything, run the two like pack systems. That way they don't try and bounce. I'm... My minecart controller was only going to the rear wheel and it had a suboptimal acceleration curve, but after working up to the very last second in one of the most hectic weeks of my life, it was race time. So I, I got a Grom. I got a, I got a mini. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome! Is this a razor? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Dude, this thing was slow as dirt. Eventually, the rest of the minis started showing up, and they all actually seemed to really like my mini mini. Gnarly, <laughs> dude. He's a big ass battery bag. I love the dude. But by some weird stroke of luck, this happened. So, I thought my mini bike was in the trailer. It is not. Ah, this is Corey's. I still tried a short race against my friend Corey, but the controller just couldn't put out the power necessary. So, instead, we all went for a cruise around the block, which it handled beautifully. Especially because the speed limit never got high enough for them to take off without me. I was so mad that my mini is at home. Because David forgot his Mini, we rescheduled for Sunday, and I immediately ordered two more responsive controllers with rapid shipping. By another stroke of luck, they arrived on time and had 100 volt caps. Although it did take me a little while to figure out the wiring. What is this? Look at this. We're gonna tug of war. But once that was sorted, it was an entirely different beast. With dual motors. Emphasis on beast. Oh my gosh, this thing rips. The next day was Sunday, and we met back where it all started. David's lot for our final showdown. <laughs> you suck at this. And let's just say, I rode circles around him. He is not great at starts. So. <laughs> That's like neck and neck. With each race, it became clearer and clearer that my mini-mini had the edge in these short drags. Dude, you're faster! My acceleration was so wicked that eventually David had to see what was up. Holy cow! Told you! Oh my god! Holy cow! And not just David. Here, babe, try it. <laughs> Now a parking lot is one thing, but getting up to highway speeds is another. So we headed out into the middle of nowhere to our desolate test strip. 
after a last minute throttle repair, we lined up for our quarter mile comparative acceleration test. We chose a quarter mile because it was the approximate distance that it would take David's Mini to reach the speed limit of 55 miles per hour. Three, two, one, go! stable at speed like it was ridiculous a few other runs we did were close and i didn't always win but i mostly did and the mini mini became legend definitely more torquey off the line and if you got in front of me there was no catching up uh, i could catch up a little bit but i was giving her all i had oh my gosh mini riders are actually some of the most welcoming people in the world and there were so many awesome people who helped to make this video possible and of course there was you who chose to watch it so thank you i'll see you next time